Hello friends, welcome to Sensible Faith, where the physical, mental, and spiritual aspects of faith are discussed and explored. This is Deborah Ann, and today I'm going to finish my series for Women's History Month by presenting to you part two of my discussion about Lucy Terry, also known as Lucy Terry Prince. I hope you'll listen to the previous episode if you're not familiar with her and her famous poem, Bars Fight, which was composed in the 1700s, passed down orally, and published in the 1850s. And of course, during the colonial period, the word bars would be translated as meadow. And so, in fact, Mrs. Prince's poem is about an armed conflict between the indigenous residents and the European descendant residents of a Massachusetts area town. But today, let's listen from the Franklin Herald newspaper published in Greenfield, Massachusetts. And we're listening to Mrs. Terry Prince's obituary published on August 21, 1821. Here's the obituary. At Sunderland, Vermont, July 11th, Mrs. Lucy Prince, a woman of color. From the church and town records where she formerly resided, we learned that she was brought from Bristol, Rhode Island to Deerfield, Massachusetts when she was four years old by Mr. Ebenezer Wells, that she was 97 years of age that she was early devoted to God in baptism, that she united with the church in Deerfield in 1744, was married to Abijah Prince on May 17, 1756, by Elijah Williams Esquire, and that she had been the mother of six children. In this remarkable woman, there was an assemblage of qualities rarely found among her sex. Her volubility, was exceeded by none. And volubility here refers to her fluency and talkativeness in her effective speech. And in general, the fluency of her speech was not destitute of instruction and education. She was much respected among her acquaintances who treated her with a degree of deference. And there ends the obituary. And as we finish up, I thought it might be a good idea to suggest some ideas about obituaries in general. And I'm coming from this discussion while I'm thinking about the not too long ago habit of many inspirational speakers or inspirational teachers and public speakers of all types who often encouraged their listeners to sit down and write what that listener would want their obituary to say. And then after composing that obituary, the listener was encouraged to then simply live as closely as possible a life that would match the points in the pre-written obituary. And it's not really a bad idea, and it could be helpful, and it could be insightful, and it could be useful. But as I read Lucy Terry Prince's obituary, it occurred to me that in the end, It is others who will say what our lives have meant. It is others who will say if we accomplished meaningful goals. It is others who will say if we were kind or helpful or important, not only for our benefit, but for the benefit of others. And that so much of what comes in that life summary is tied to how our actions have impacted those who have left behind those who may have predeceased us. But in any event, it's not a personal statement. Actually, an obituary is a community statement. It's a community statement of what our lives have meant to others. Just something to keep in mind. I hope you've enjoyed the series, and I am now going to begin next week a new series that will lead us to Easter. Easter's two weeks away from today, and I will be doing a word and phrase study of a passage from the book of Ephesians. We're going to look at Ephesians 
chapter 3, verse 10. And that might be familiar to you. It begins with the phrase, for we are God's own workmanship. We are God's own handiwork. So I hope you'll join me for that. I hope you'll follow so you don't miss any episodes. And I hope you will live well, live with strength, purpose, direction, focus, and joy. Continue to seek and find a sensible faith.